John D. has a grandiose daydream in which he single-handedly defeats the entire Justice League with an enormous robot. But soon after, he snaps out of a dream and returns to reality. It seems like he is a convict in Strikers Island Penitentiary. He has been volunteering as a guinea pig for experiments with the Materi Opticon, a device that gives its subject extrasensory perception. He is eager to try an increased dose, but the scientists say that would be dangerous. The police deputy returns, and D is told that he has been turned down for parole. More bad news comes when his wife, Penny, says she is leaving him for another man. That night, all hell breaks loose at the penitentiary, as someone has released all the inmate cells, and the dangerous criminals run for freedom, crushing anyone who stands in front of them. His chance comes with the prison riots, and during the riot, he breaks into the laboratory and tricks the doctor to knock him unconscious. John D. turns on the Materiopticon to maximum. After the riot is quelled, D. is found in the lab by other guards in a catatonic state. At the Watchtower, Flash is curious about John John's Mind Palace activities, but he gets scolded by the Batman in the process. They are notified of the prison break soon, and Batman gets the team engaged in the mission as soon as possible, and even John returns to himself. Firefly and Vulcan are trying to make a breakthrough with the standing guards, but the Green Lantern and Batman arrive trying to capture them. Lantern finds it hard to defend Vulcana's fire blazers, but Batman gets on top of Firefly and make the duo clash and fall on each other. Lantern hold them inside a vacuum tube, and they soon fall unconscious. Luminous is hunted by Hawkgirl, but in her arrogance, she is tricked by Luminous and Hawkgirl gets stuck in a compressing chamber, only to be saved by Superman at the end. Batman yawns, explaining that he has gone for three days without sleep. While there, they are told that John D. has escaped the prison infirmary, now littered with the bodies of other men in similar catatonic states. Lantern leaves to join the others, while Batman is determined to track down D. That night, John D. is watching the house which Penny, his wife, shares with her new man. Through telepathy, he appears in her dreams, adopting a new, terrifying appearance and the name Dr. Destiny. He goes into herself and manipulates her mind. Asleep, Penny begins to scream, and her man is unable to wake her. Meanwhile, back at the penitentiary, Flash is battling alone against a number of luminous copies, and he is finding it quite hard. Superman flies in with Hawkgirl, and they get hold of the real one and pounds him, destroying his copying device. Grundy and Copperhead try to escape as well, but they meet the guards head-on outside. Grundy destroys several cop cars, but they retreat as they cannot withstand the huge force. Seeing a vulnerable Hawk Girl, Copperhead jumps on her and tries to subdue her, but Hawk Girl flies into the sky. Grundy is as powerful as Superman and John John's combined, but he is not too smart. They team up and send him flying through the air. Green Lantern arrives and threatens Copperhead, and he eventually let go and Hawk Girl punches him and knocks him out. They take all five of them back to the prison and seems like all is well. Superman and Green Lantern decide to call it a night. Penny is taken to the mental hospital, and she is restrained till the doctor sedates her. Her new man cannot do anything about her condition. Batman tracks down Penny in a hospital, and John Johns, whom Batman calls in. John probes Penny's mind but is unable to bring her out of her delusional state, though he gleans John D's new persona and that he wants revenge against the League. Hawk Girl is tired after a long day and falls asleep behind the monitor in the watchtower while Flash brings her coffee. As the rest of the League falls asleep, Dr. Destiny chuckles as he sees the perfect opportunity to strike. Batman and John, realizing what is happening, quickly call the other members, but they are already asleep. In their dreams, each of them lives out their worst nightmare. Flash is watching his own hero movie with a group of orphan kids at the orphanage when one kid starts asking him rude questions. He goes to the fridge, only to find a massive frog inside it, and just then, the kids turn into monsters and start attacking him. Flash runs away from the orphanage into the open streets, and he is not ready for what's coming. Flash is trapped in a world where he's moving so quickly that everything and everyone around him appears practically motionless, making him totally alone. Superman is having a nice dinner with Lois Lane when suddenly his laser vision starts acting on its own, burning too much. Accidentally, he kills his girlfriend, Lois Lane, and later, Superman grows into an uncontrollable powerhouse where he kills Jimmy Olsen and destroys the Daily Planet. Jon Stewart is trapped in a world where his bond with the power ring 
has literally alienated him from his loved ones to the point that he is unable to understand their language or make himself understood. And the energy of his ring is consuming him from the inside. Dr. Destiny shows up and weakens him furthermore in his dream. The Hawk Girl is tricked by Dr. Destiny, and he traps her wings and drops her from the watchtower, where she falls into a grave dug on the ground. She gets trapped in a coffin which is six feet underground, and her claustrophobia kicks in. Batman is determined to track John D. down, reasoning that he has probably chosen someplace familiar as a hideout. Gian takes the other leaguers to the watchtower for medical attention. Hearing a news report that Penny has died as a result of Destiny's torture, John decides that he has to risk entering his teammates' minds. Batman searches Dee's house and his regular haunts, but his lack of sleep is threatening to catch up with him before he can find Dee. His computer tells him that Dee was a low-level LexCorp employee arrested in a warehouse for guarding a supply of smuggled weapons after a sweep by the League. Give me a triple. <gasps> now. John Johns visits Superman in his dream and confronts him hiding in the barn of his parents' farm in Smallville. He strengthens Superman's mind and together they defeat Dr. Destiny's hold on him. They then go to rescue John Stewart who is walking into his own doom led by Dr. Destiny. John and Superman distracts Destiny and the Green Lantern bounce back with his regained energy to defeat his demons as well. They then visit Flash, stuck in his Speed Force world. But suddenly, they are frozen by Flash's perception of his nightmare, but manage to give enough information for the speedster to realize that he simply had to slow his heartbeat. By the time Flash is freed, Dr. Destiny has resorted to manifesting himself as a giant that proves nigh invulnerable. John Johns turn himself into a huge giant as well to battle with Destiny, and eventually, they are victorious. Although they defeat him, Hawk Girl is still trapped, and her mind has a strong resistance against telepathy. Batman tracks John D down at the warehouse. D is close enough that he can powers. enter Batman's mind oh, even though he's awake, one. but Batman I keeps him out by up. humming Brother John over and over again. Relying partly on projecting telepathic illusions, D attacks Batman hand to hand, trying to stab him with a syringe containing a sedative. In the fight, D accidentally injects himself and falls unconscious. Finally, Hawk Girl awakens and sees the rest of the League gathered around her, smiling, except for a tired Batman who is snoring in a nearby chair. At the same time, D lies alone in the infirmary at Stryker's catatonic, humming Brother John over and over again. Roxy Rocket flies through Metropolis on her personal rocket, closely pursued by Superman. She dives under a tunnel only to find Superman at the other end. She takes the risk of flying right at him, but he manages to snatch her off the rocket, which crashes harmlessly in the bay. Superman is amazed that even Roxy would be daring enough to make trouble in Metropolis, but she shrugs and informs him that Batman has gone missing and Gotham City is now overrun with crooks. Out in the Gotham Experience Building, a couple of criminals rob the jewelry store of its diamond jewelry on the belief that the police are too busy to come and Batman won't show. However, they failed to reckon with Robin. After playing with the minds of the robbers, he easily foils the robbery, only to find the robbers had reinforcements. But before they can shoot him, Superman shows up and subdues the crooks. Superman then consults Robin about Batman's whereabouts. Robin explains that Batman claimed he'd be away on business, leaving Robin to defend the whole city by himself. When the bat signal goes up, Robin claims that crime gets worse every time Batman doesn't show. Superman vows that Batman will this time. Out on the roof of the Gotham Police Department, Commissioner Gordon and a police officer waiting in vain for Batman. However, just as they give up, Batman and Robin appear. Gordon informs Batman that Bane has returned to Gotham and is now twice as strong as he used to be. Unknown to the Gotham Police, Batman is actually Superman in Batman's outfit and imitating his voice. They go to Wayne Enterprises to investigate the messages sent by Bruce Wayne. Robin uses a gadget from Batman's utility belt to disperse the guards and they get in. The call claims that Bruce went on vacation, but a previous call to Robin claimed that he would be at work. Robin traces the call to New Zealand, but neither he nor Superman believes the trace to be real. Superman investigates the papers in the room and discovers nanites crawling on their surface. Looking at the phone, he discovers a needle and realizes that Bruce is under some kind of mind control. 
Together, Go for the Batman and Robin Do interrogate it. the Penguin about the whereabouts of the Mad Hatter. After some convincing, he confides in them that the Mad Hatter is meeting with the Riddler and Bane. The three criminals intend to control Gotham City with Riddler acting as a jailer, the Mad Hatter as a puppeteer, and Bane as an enforcer. However, Batman and Robin appear to foil their plans. Robin manages to knock down Riddler initially, but soon after Riddler manages to cage him. Bane engages Batman in a fierce battle. The Super Batman is surprised to find Bane so strong and powerful that he goes down to him easily. But he gets back on his feet and pounds the Bane into a pulp. Even Robin takes advantage of the events and escapes from the cage, locking the Riddler up and ganging on the bars. Together, after a short chase, they capture the Mad Hatter who is no match for Superman's speed as he tries to get away from the duo. Superman is really doing justice for the Dark Knight. At the Gotham Police Headquarters, the Mad Hatter examines the Nanites and surprises Batman and Robin by telling them that the robots are not his. In fact, the Nanites are far more advanced than any Earth technology he's ever seen, suggesting they may even be extraterrestrial in origin. Looking for more of a lead, Superman and Robin go to the Batcave to research what little they know. Since the alien origin of the Nanites, it's difficult to tell what the aliens want Bruce for. He checks the message sent to Lucius Fox and hears rocket exhaust in the background, whereupon Robin realizes that Bruce must be at Wayne Aerospace, which is supposed to be abandoned. The duo heads to Wayne Aerospace and discovers there is, in fact, a group of technicians working on a new rocket that has Kryptonian features. Bruce comes onto the scene and tells his staff they can go home, and the staff members leave in confusion. After they have gone, Brainiac reveals himself as the mastermind behind Bruce's disappearance. He's about to kill Bruce on the basis that he's outlived his usefulness, but Superman intervenes and stops him. Brainiac is unconcerned, as he believes he is up against the mortal Batman, but soon finds out who he's really facing after he tries to burn him down. Superman confronts Brainiac, but is unable to prevent him from launching his rocket. Still, Superman follows him into space, and though it seems Brainiac has gained the upper hand, Superman manages to destroy the rocket and his foe's new body. Back on Earth, Bruce is returned to normal because the nanites in his body have begun to self-destruct harmlessly. Superman cautions him on checking his computer systems anyway and leaves with a compliment to Robin. We have to admit that Superman actually played the Dark Knight's role even better than the Batman at some moments, and it's just a joy watching the big two pair up for a mission. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.